Okay, I know what you guys are going to say, but I promise you that this is not a miraculous ladybug channel. And I also promise to have other content on other things soon. I just... This show has so much going on. When you see gold, you just gotta dig for it, you know? Speaking of gold, let's talk Chloe Bourgeois. Hello everyone, my name is Ayla Bell, and today I'm going to not only discuss the tragedy that is Chloe, but also give my version on how I think she should be handled. But before we get into that, if you're interested in opinionated videos, rewrites, or analyses of anime, cartoons, or stories, or if you like the occasional story time video, then please subscribe and ring the notification bell. The support really helps as I'm trying to reach my dream of having a creative career. So, if you like this video, please also give it a like and a thumbs up. And if you fancy yourself some cute and colorful artworks, please consider checking out and following my Instagram page at Alabelle. You'll see some of my recent works here. And now onto the topic of the video. As previously established, I have never watched a single episode of Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, but regardless of that fact, I know most of what's happening in the show due to massive spoilers on Instagram and fanfiction. I have previously discussed how Miraculous's story elements ripped off the manga slash anime Shugokara, as well as how the time travel aspect of Miraculous is stupid broken. I will link both videos in the description below. Something that also bugs me about Miraculous is its usage of Chloe. Spoilers for season 4 incoming, by the way. From what I know about Chloe, she's the spoiled, rich, entitled mean girl trope who is a bully and low-key racist to Marinette. She's also childhood friends with Adrian. Or at least she was. <laughs> we'll get into that. Um, she has a father who bends to her whims and a mother who neglects her. Side note, if you want to read slash look at some hilarious comics about Audrey, Chloe's mom, which hype up her obsessions and further accentuate her neglect of everyone who isn't Gabriel aggressed, then check out at Klogami on Instagram. Klogami makes comics on the daily, usually about Audrey, and I implore you check them out. They're really fun. <laughs> uh, anyway, for a while, Chloe was also the holder of the Bee Miraculous, which held Pollen, her Kwame, who transformed her into her superhero persona, Queen Bee. Normally, the main character wouldn't give their rival or bully a cool thing like a Miraculous, but due to shenanigans, Chloe got a hold of it and initially made some really foolish decisions with it that nearly got many people hurt and at worst killed. However, Chloe was super happy to be a part of something so important as a hero of Paris and, at the time, really wanted to impress her idol, Ladybug. So she was actively working harder to be a better person who could be worthy of wielding the miraculous. Was it a slow burn? Of course. I mean, I presume so, because again, I didn't watch the show, but I imagine it was a slow burn, because like, no one that stuck in bad habits can just get rid of them so quickly. But you could tell she was trying. Mari saw that effort and allowed Chloe to be Queen Bee a couple more times. Chloe was, as I understand, showing promise. She even resisted being akumatized. You all out there praise Alia for breaking out of her akumatization in season 4, but Chloe was the one who showed us that with enough willpower, it was possible to get out of it. Chloe crawled so Alia could walk or run, or however the saying goes. Just saying. But due to reasons I'm a bit unaware of, bad guys were doing their bad guy thing and Chloe wanted to help Ladybug save the day, but for some reason Ladybug wouldn't let her help. I don't know if it was because she didn't trust Chloe fully or if she just didn't need Queen Bee at the time. And as a result of this perceived rejection and neglect, mirroring what she feels with her mother, Chloe got so frustrated at Ladybug to the point where she not only willingly helped Hawk Moth, but revealed the identities of all the heroes except Ladybug and Cat Noir. Once the day was saved, Ladybug no longer trusted Chloe and took the Bee Miraculous back for good. Chloe then renounced her love for Ladybug and no longer wanted anything to do with her. Cue the massive character regression back to season 1 Chloe. So where are we now? We're in the middle of season 4. 
Ladybug runs into an issue and needs someone to wield the Bee Miraculous. Who does she choose? Not Chloe, but Chloe's half-sister Zoe, whom Marinette met, like, yesterday. Guess who isn't happy about that? It's Chloe slash Queen Bee fans, and of course, Chloe herself. I know that Chloe doesn't know that Zoe is Vesperia, the Bee Miraculous holder, but it still stings. <laughs> stings. Get it? Because it's a bee. Miraculous and bees have stingers. Anyway, it stings that someone else has the position that she worked hard for. And if the salt weren't already further in the wound, Chloe lost Adrian as a friend because she broke her promise of not being a bully to people. So, other than Sabrina, her servant, Chloe is utterly alone. Fans of Chloe and fans of those who were appreciating her character development made their displeasure well known to creator Thomas Astrick. Astrick tweeted out some replies to these criticisms, and his replies essentially boiled down to, She's the bad guy and will always be bad. Some people just don't get reformed no matter how hard you try. Get over it. His answers go a little more in depth, but that's the gist of it. If you're interested in seeing his actual tweets, search in Google Thomas Astrick Chloe tweet. He actually tweeted about it a lot more than I thought he did. Before I go into my formal critique, let me just say, please no one attack this man or Zag, anybody, verbally or otherwise. At the end of the day, it is his show and his characters and ultimately his decision on how things play out. Regardless of what some fans want, it is his vision, come what may. Yes, it's frustrating to have your expectations shattered and to see characters you love be treated unfairly, but sometimes that happens in life and you have to be mature about it. Sometimes you can change it and sometimes it's not for you to change. It's perfectly fine to critique things and give constructive criticism as long as it's polite and not a personal attack. I'm actually tempted to say that what he's doing isn't harming anyone as it's just a kid's show, but... I do take issue with something. I'm gonna be completely upfront with you all. I'm a Christian, and part of Christianity is unconditional love and forgiveness of people's wrongs. And another part is being so filled with love and hope and the overwhelming joy and relief that comes from knowing that someone, i.e. Jesus, loves and forgives you to the point that you want to be someone completely different. You want to cast away your old self who committed so many wrongs and want to be better and treat others with love gentleness, understanding, etc. Through this unconditional love, you become someone new despite your past. Your past doesn't matter. You can still contribute to society in a positive way. Yes, because of how life and things work, there's still going to be consequences to your actions, of course. I'm not saying that stuff just disappears, but a lot more doors just open up to you when you decide to make that change because of that love that was shown to you and when people give you a chance. So when someone like Asterix comes along and says that a 14 slash 15 year old girl who has problems at home and has no friends and lost so much is so deep into the hole of villainy that she can't come out is not only cynical, but harmful to young viewers. I'm not ignorant though. Yes, I am ignorant about Miraculous, as I have said in my previous video, but I am not ignorant about this fact. Some people are bad and they stay bad, or people have bad behaviors and they continue to do those bad behaviors despite the consequences. After all, you can only change if you really want to. Some people really don't want to. So yes, Asterix is correct that some people don't change. On some level, sure, you could depict that in a show and have that be a lesson to kids and whoever that not everyone will change, and I do generally think it's a good idea to show that sometimes, as to not delude anyone. But also you don't have fun or engaging stories all the time if everyone reforms. Stories need villains sometimes, and, you know, exciting stories sometimes have villains who don't reform. It's you know, stories got a story and be exciting to keep your attention and stuff and suspension of disbelief and all that. But having said all that, like, don't do the not capable of reforming thing with Chloe, not with someone like Chloe. My favorite trope in all of stories is the reformed villain. 
my favorite characters in live action, anime, and cartoons are reformed villains. Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z, Starlight Glimmer from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and Regina from Once Upon a Time. Those three are my favorite characters of all time. I love reformed villains. They have the most character development out of anyone, usually, and they are an excellent analogy to how knowing Christ is supposed to affect you. No, none of them are Christian stories, but I cannot help seeing the parallels. You start out as terrible, and then you see the light and become awesome. It's just good stuff. It shows that no matter how far you fall, you can always rise back up if you're not only willing to work at it, but also if people are willing to forgive and give you a chance. Chloe has all of the potential to reform and become an amazing character. At this point, she's been torn down to basically nothing. She lost so much. It's usually at a character's lowest point that they can rise up and make a triumphant return. Then again, I don't quite think she's at her lowest point just yet. I think if Sabrina breaks away from her and finally gains some backbone, that will be when Chloe has truly reached her lowest point. So I'm about to discuss something from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and there's going to be some heavy spoilers here. If you plan on watching MLP, then this is one of those kind of spoilers that, trust me, you don't want to know about if you plan on watching this show, because it's going to, it's not going to be as good of a surprise to you, so you might want to skip to the next point so you don't get spoiled. But for everyone out there who either doesn't care or already knows, then keep on listening. Chloe highly resembles Diamond Tiara from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. I also heard that she highly resembles Pacifica from Gravity Falls, but I haven't really watched Gravity Falls. I watched like the first season and I stopped caring. I know things, I know cool wild things and happen and it's a cool show and it's amazing and you should watch it out low. Yeah, 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 I don't want to. I don't want to. I do not. I don't want to watch Gravity Falls. I don't feel like it. But I'm glad you guys all like it, yay. I'm not going to use Pacifica because I don't know enough about her to do that. I know Diamond Tiara, so I'm going to use Diamond Tiara. Anyway, Diamond Tiara is a spoiled, rich, and entitled little filly who's not only a bully to the little sisters of three of the main characters, but she's also made fun of someone's disability. Due to being rich and earning her cutie mark, she's had the other younger ponies' attention as she could flaunt her wealth and status. Like Chloe, she had a second-in-command named Silverspoon who joined in the bullying. Silverspoon, however, was more like a lower-ranked accomplice than Sabrina who is legit a servant. Diamond Tiara was also the class president and highly influential. She had the power she wanted and appeared happy. Her dad, Filthy Rich, was a bit of a pushover and usually gave her what she wanted, but Unlike Chloe's dad, Filthy Rich had a little bit more backbone and was actually willing to discipline Diamond Tiara like one or two times, not enough to affect her character clearly. And her mom, Diamond Tiara's mom, Spoiled Rich, was verbally abusive to Diamond Tiara and had unrealistic expectations put on her. Spoiled Rich was also super entitled and taught her daughter the same behaviors. In the season 5 episode, Crusaders of the Lost Mark, Diamond Tiara lost her title as class president, lost the respect of her classmates, and lost her best friend who wouldn't take her meanness anymore. What's more, she got yelled at by her mom who basically called her a failure. Diamond Tiara had reached her lowest point as she was alone, miserable, and questioning who she's meant to be. Being rich and spoiled and entitled got her nowhere. It wasn't until she reached the slow point that she was willing to allow the cutie mark crusaders, the ponies she was bullying, to befriend her and get to know and understand her. Seeing other people, sorry, ponies, believe in her potential, that she could be better and not be alone and actually be happy, Diamond Tiara finally decided to stand up against her mother and also decided to be a better pony, who treats others with respect and she uses her special talent of getting other ponies to do what she wants for the good of others. That's such a good message, and I think it should be applied to Chloe as well. There is no way that Chloe's arc is done. She's probably not going to be akumatized anymore because A, people are tired of seeing this happen, and B, she has Ladybug's magic charm that prevents akumatizations. Since we're done with the akumatizations, there's another aspect of Chloe to explore. 
Zoe. Not only do we need development on their relationship, but also this happened right here. Zoe told Chloe that no matter how nasty she gets, they'll be sisters and she'll still love her. And for a split second, Chloe had this look on her face. It was partially a look of surprise that someone was willing to be nice to her despite what she's done, but also a bit of regret in there as well. When making cartoons, facial expressions are super important, and animating is already hard enough. So when an expression is made, it means something and is significant. That expression was not by accident. Something is stirring in our queen bee, but it hasn't fully manifested yet. Chloe still has a heart. She just needs some guidance in finding it again. And for the record, I don't hate Zoe. I am annoyed at why she exists, but she as a character is fine, I guess. She's a nice girl, and that's about it. A bit blah, but nice. As a Chloe fan, it's annoying that not only did they have to create a new character to wield the Bee Miraculous, but you make it more painful by making it Chloe's sister, who's being advertised as the greatest thing that ever happened to Paris since Ladybug, because she's just so darn sweet. That's just kind of needlessly cruel, in my opinion. And also for the record, I don't actually care that Zoe is a miraculous wielder. We all know that Marinette hands out the miraculous like candy, or like how Oprah gave out new cars to the audience, and it's perfectly in character for her to give a miraculous to a nice person that she's friends with, so I'm fine with that. What I care about is that Zoe was specifically given the Bee Miraculous, as if Marinette couldn't use the Bee Miraculous herself or unify it with the Ladybug Miraculous, which she has done before. No, this was specifically done to spite Chloe. You can also kind of tell that Zoe is getting the favorite treatment in two ways. One, Zoe was given a Miraculous the soonest of all of Marinette's friends. Like I said, she met Zoe like yesterday. And two, Zoe's transformation sequence is so in depth. Compare her transformation sequence to Mylene's transformation sequence. Both are new superheroes that debuted in the same season, and you can see some favoritism in there. Also, side note, Vesperia's outfit bothers me because she looks more like a wasp than a bee. That's like making Ladybug's outfit resemble a scarab beetle more than a ladybug. They're both beetles, so it should be okay, right? You know something that would be really neat? If Zoe's outfit looked all sharp and wasp-like because she's secretly a terrible person. Just like how wasps are not so secretly terrible creatures. That would be such a cool plot twist that she's one of the main villains of the season. That's kind of similar to me wanting Adrian's mom to actually be the big bad of the show because she's been so hyped up as sweet for so long that it would be a great slap to the face. This lady probably wielded the peacock miraculous and might have done some bad stuff. I don't know. She was an actress, so maybe she was pretending to be nice. It's possible, and I would give Astrook so much credit if he pulled something like this. See, I'm not saying I don't want cool villains. Chloe just doesn't rub me as a villain forever type of person. Zoe secretly being evil as a headcanon and wish aside, here's how I think they should have handled the Chloe Zoe thing. You know, if we insist on keeping Zoe a good guy. Before I start this, if anything I say here ends up being true, then I will expect my paycheck in the mail zag. Thanks. Firstly, give Zoe a different Miraculous. I don't care which one. Just give her one that hasn't been used or claimed yet. And if Marinette insists on making Zoe a wielder, make it so that she has no choice but to pick Zoe. Because choosing someone you just met is kind of dumb, coming from someone who is super cautious about secret identities and following the rules and stuff. Make it so that every other possible option became unable to help and Zoe was the last hope. Then give her the non B miraculous. Make the villain's weakness the new miraculous's weakness so that there isn't a need for the B miraculous. And if Mari needs the B miraculous to be used in battle, this battle or another battle, then let her use it herself. Next, have Chloe find out somehow that Zoe is a wielder. Let that jealousy fester. Have Chloe at first contemplate telling everyone that Zoe is a superhero so that Zoe wouldn't be able to keep her miraculous anymore. 
but then have Chloe come to the conclusion that people will love Zoe even more if they find out that she's a superhero. Chloe would then decide to keep the secret to herself and just let that anger boil. She can't tell anyone about it, so she just gets worse and worse the more she thinks about it. She eventually takes the anger out on Sabrina, and Sabrina finally can't take it anymore and leaves Chloe. It's at this point that Chloe realizes she's not fabulous at all. She's lost everyone important to her, and she starts to question who she really is. None of her rich girl stuff makes her happy anymore. She thinks she's nobody and doesn't even deserve to be considered a bourgeois anymore. Chloe decides to run away from home, taking only her teddy bear with her and some clothes. In the middle of her running away, she almost gets hurt from a random Akuma attack and ends up getting saved by Cat Noir and Ladybug. Once the day is saved, Chloe continues to try to leave Paris on her own. Cat notices or realizes or is, I guess just blatantly told that Chloe is leaving and, secretly being Adrian, feels bad and tells Ladybug to go on ahead without him. Ladybug's a bit confused but doesn't question him and she leaves. Cat tries to reason with Chloe not to go, but Chloe can't think of a good reason to stay and that no one cares about her. Cat says he does, but she doesn't believe him and says he's on the traitor Ladybug's side. In a twist of events and in a leap of faith and desperation, since he doesn't want Chloe, a young girl, to get hurt wandering the world on her own with absolutely no survival skills, Cat reveals his identity to Chloe and she sees that he's Adrian, someone who does care about her despite their previous falling out. This would also mirror Marinette telling Alia her secret identity. Chloe is confused and shocked and angry at him all at the same time. There's some jealousy in there as well since both Adrian and Kat are beloved by all of Paris while she's nothing. He tries to explain to her the effects of her nasty attitude and why everything happened the way it happened. After some probing, she finally admits she doesn't know how else to be. All her life she's been told what to do and what to say and how to be. She doesn't know how to change. She thinks she can't change. She's better off disappearing. Adrian says he's willing to help her because he really does care as she was his first friend. Chloe says she doesn't want to go home. Adrian says he wishes she could stay with him, but it probably wouldn't go over well with his father. Instead, he thinks of Marinette and thinks that Chloe could stay with her. Neither of the girls wants this, but at this point, Chloe isn't really willing to put up much of a fight. And Mari, not wanting to upset Adrian, agrees, and her parents are okay with it too. Chloe's parents are informed of the arrangement. Chloe stays with Marinette and at first is very mean to her. Mari tries to be the bigger person and not fight back. She vents to Kat, while she's in ladybug form, that she has to deal with someone super annoying in her life and then asks him what he said to Chloe. He makes an excuse that he needed some extra help and asked his good friend Adrian to lend her a hand. Eventually, Mari tells Zoe that Chloe is staying with her and invites Zoe over to talk to her. Chloe is initially cold, but eventually opens up about her feelings to Mari and Zoe, and they get a better understanding of her. Long story short, through their efforts in giving her another chance, Chloe starts to find it easier to be nicer and actually tries to help people in response to their kindness. She learns to do things on her own without demanding people to work for her. And when the time comes, Mari has enough faith in Chloe, along with Zoe, Adrian, and Kat vouching for her, and gives Chloe the Bee Miraculous back. And this time, Chloe is a much wiser and nicer hero and eventually earns back the respect of Paris. She would eventually also move back home. She'd still be hurt by her mother's neglect, but would learn to appreciate her father and his kindness, and they would build a better relationship. She also apologized to Sabrina, and they end up becoming actual friends. And it's through all of this, all of these events, that Chloe discovers who she truly wants to be and works towards that goal. Maybe she'll want to become a teacher, as she loves her teacher, Miss Bustier, so much, and wants to become an educator who helps lift people up, not tear them down. And that ends Chloe's arc. If Astrek is just trolling everyone and does plan on redeeming her, then I applaud him for putting up such a believable front. I will happily say I'm wrong if he ends up pulling a 180. But if he's serious, at least fanfiction exists. In any case, what do you guys think of Chloe? Did you like my version of her character arc? Comment below and let's get this conversation started. Until then, 
That's all there is. There isn't any more.